Now, let me ask you a question right off the top. Okay. The, is this the penultimate question from last time? <laughs> uh, right I off love the it. Bat? I love it. My question is, when was the last time you had a nightmare about high school? Uh, oh, two nights ago. <laughs> and that, my friends, is why we're doing Saved by the Bell. That's right. The triumphant return of the classic uh, series from the 90s. Oh, 89, I guess I should say. I forgot that it started that far back. That's how old we are. We grew up watching Saved by the Bell all the way from the beginning through the college years, sometimes the wedding and everything in between. We went to Hawaii with them and everything. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I still would date Tiffany Amber Thiessen if she would so have me. Jesse, oh, I figured you would go Lark Voorhees. I was wrong on that. Oh, but well, you know what? Any of them. Okay, okay. How about Screech? Age would appropriate. You Screech? Age oh. appropriate. Yeah, okay. The reason, uh, the other reason that we wanted to do Saved by the Bell is because they have a new, new class of Saved sure. by the Bell. Just started a new season on the Peacock. You can watch all those on there now. I would say not bad. Not bad at all. Highly enjoyable, honestly. I, I like what they did with it. Um, I guess you should point out that the the creators, Tracy uh, Wigfield, who was a huge writer on um, 30 Rock, yep. and then she co-created the new show, uh, Great News, along with Tina Fey. So uh, she had her hand in, in doing some comedy, uh, and good comedy. And I think she was, this is a perfect one to, to, to readapt. I love that. Let's start right there, sir. Is Stay by the Bell a good comedy? The original one was not. It was a way to pass 30 minutes while selling you stuff in between uh, and after school. Mm-hmm. I think this new one is a very good comedy. This is definitely more for adults. This is not for teenagers. Uh, there's a lot of not like hardcore adult jokes, but there's definitely adult jokes that you have to get. You have to be older. You have to have known the old show. Um, and one thing I really like is that, yes, Zach Morris and Kelly Kapowski and everybody is older. They all still live near, they all live near Bayside. Their kids go to Bayside, but the twist, their kids are not the stars of the new show. Right. They're foils to poor kids from another school whose school gets shut down. And those kids, um, minority kids, are the main stars of the show. And I love that twist that it's not just we're watching like Bill and Ted with their kids take on the mantle. You're getting to see Bayside now through the eyes of someone else where they're like, wow, Bayside's this amazing, rich, you know, Highland Park type school when we couldn't even have, I think she said their library was um, army manuals, yep. you know, like, <laughs> like, you know, old magazines and army manuals. And everybody at Bayside has an iPad they carry around to download everything. So uh, it's an interesting take to see it from their look. The two characters that do not uh, reoccur in this show are Dustin Diamond and the Screech. He's not on, which I'm fine with. He wasn't one of my favorite characters to begin with. And he's his life's kind of gone to uh, Hades. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. sure. Yep. Uh, and Dennis Haskins. Uh, which the only thing I can think of that he's done is since the original Saved by the Bell, he was uh, Mr. Belding, was one episode where he played a accused child molester in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> uh, but instead what a turn. we have the wonderful uh, John Michael Higgins. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember is the lawyer from, um, one of the lawyers from Arrested Development, and he is perfect. He's so erudite so educated he carries himself so well i mean as a care as a character um in all of his characters he always carries himself so highly educated but so willing to be beaten down yep. and give up and lose <laughs> in the situations around him so i i thought he was perfect for the new principal it was really interesting how they were going to play that principal theme because Zach was always an antagonist with Mr. Belding and he always got over on him. And this twenty, this time in 2020, how are you going to do that appropriately? How is it not going to feel like, oh, he should be in jail for this stuff? But it kind of worked. Like they did things that, that he could pick on the principal, but it wasn't bad stuff that he was going to jail for. Well, and that's the nice trade-off is by letting Zach have his kid, Mac, 
Mm -hmm. um, and all the other kids, uh, not Kelly Kapowski, uh, Jesse yep. has the son that goes there. They're able, and Mario Lopez is now say, a gym yeah. teacher there, teaches football. By keeping all of them the same, they're, they've basically locked in. Zach is still Zach, although he's now Cal governor of California. Mm -hmm. And he got there by scheming his way into it to get out of a $75 <laughs> parking ticket. So I love that the older characters are still themselves and the show yes. allows them to keep like that. And their kids are younger versions. So Mac is definitely this vein. They still call him preppy. He's always trying to get into schemes, but because that's so ridiculous 30 years later, those characters are pushed aside and they're like, right, look how stupid that is. Now let's focus on some real issues of some inner city kids who are trying to get a real education and care about members of their society and let's compare the two where you know high school was treated as a joke in saved by the bell and zach was always able to get one over on mr belding and mm -hmm. in the new show the teacher or you know john, john johnny michael hickey uh wants to work with the new girl daisy to help her succeed because as he puts it uh you know these kids do don't you know these kids are blessed these kids do have stuff handed to them but the one thing they're never going to do is not take their seat at the table they think they deserve it and you have to learn that too to mm -hmm. take your seat at the table and the plot revolves around uh first of all them closing a bunch of poor schools and a bunch of racist white parents not yep. wanting those kids to come to bayside <laughs> but a black reporter stands up and says well why don't you just send them to bayside where your kids go if it's so great uh so zach morris agrees to do that uh, and then she decides to run for student council president so that she can um, make her a name, real Del? difference for all the new kids. Do it. What, what's her name? Her name is Daisy. Okay. Just making sure yeah, that you the know her name. Or the character Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, one of the things is they're paired up with a Bayside buddy, mm -hmm. which is an, a, a great idea that every inner city youth kid is paired up with a – a, a knockoff version of the original Saved by the Bell character. Yep. So you, every single bit of it, everybody has a foil in some new way. Um, and they, they even reference how old shows used to be. For instance, Mario Lopez is trying to get the young black kid to play football because they've never won a, a football game against the other team. So he starts to have a rap with him and he turns his chair around backwards and he sits down in the chair and the kid's like, wow, I haven't seen anybody do that in 20 years. And he tries to, you know, he tries to have a rap session with them. And at the end, he goes, uh, you know, back when I went here, you know, things can be solved with the light 30 second lighthearted conversation, you know, and talking to, but I guess things have really changed, huh? Um, I never, so the show acknowledges the change in culture. For sure, for sure. I never thought that I would relate as much to AC Slater as I did when he's talking to that kid, <laughs> you know, yeah. between the spin in the chair around and just like this kid's looking at you like, like what are you talking about you know this doesn't it's just not even in his realm of yeah, possibility because they were the hip kids and zach is still you know governor and kind of skeezy but people like him but ac is just this i think if it's one point he's like i know you think i've got my life together he's like dude you're a football coach at base out high i'm just obviously you don't <laughs> i do not think you have your life together I, and i think he said i saw you eating soup in your car at lunch He's like, hey, man, that was melted ice cream, right? Um, <laughs> Got a different One of the callbacks, they even reuse some props. Did you notice that, um, of course, all the kids from Bayside have smartphones. Bayside has an app now. Mm -hmm. Everything's announced through the app and their iPads. So that's one of the ways the inner kitty sits or left out is they don't have a way to participate in some of the announcements or finding out what's going on around school. And, of course, Daisy's mom refuses her to get a smartphone because she's convinced that she's only going to use it to take nude pictures <laughs> uh, and send them around the internet. That so is she pulls such out a, the phone she has. And did you, that is such a Mexican mom thing to do. I don't know how much Mexican <laughs> moms you know, but that is very appropriate. And yeah, talking about the phone, it is the brick phone. It is a Zach Morris brick phone. And as soon as she was, pulled that it, out. It was Zach Morris's phone. Oh, uh, yes. it was so great. So we're in the early 90s. It was so cool to carry around the what's called the brick now mm -hmm. that Zach Morris was that cool to be a kid at school. They could carry around this like four pound, one foot tall with a one foot tall antenna on top. Mm -hmm. yep. And that was cool. And now that's like it's the exact same prop. And it is a joke that she is carrying that around. That's the only way she has to communicate with her family. 
I think that one of the people miss nowadays with those Saturday morning TV shows that we used to watch is for all the cheese and the hokiness sometimes that they sh- those shows gave us, there was always a goodness to them. And I think that that's one of the key parts to these new, new characters because the rich kids, yes, they want this and yes, they're going to do this for dumb reasons. But then they also realize too, I can do this for somebody else. And like, it was kind of a true genuine moment they had with Daisy to be like, I'm going to help you. And then she turned around and stabbed him right in the back and wouldn't let him have the spot, which I thought was great too. But there's a trueness and there's a goodness. Whereas I'm going to give you a comparison and you tell me what you think. So Zach and, oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say compared to the new 90210 that aired last year, there was an inherent uh, snarkiness to it. There wasn't a goodness. And I don't think there was a goodness in the original, mind you. But, you know, you compare these two shows and you look at, I think that that's a key component of how this is going to work and how 90210 didn't work. Yeah, because Zach and um, the other girl, I I can't remember who she's related to, but basically the two most popular kids at school. um, They find out that Daisy's wanting to run for student council president. And in doing so, they get a parking space that's really close to the school. Now, Daisy doesn't have a car. Both of them do. So Daisy spends all night getting her posters ready to put up by the next day. When she walks in, Zach (laughs) and this other girl have their posters plastered everywhere with the school because, of course, they both have poster guys. Yeah, of course. Um, You don't have a poster guy? You don't have a poster guy? Um, So they decide, you know, they want to run just for the parking space. And she makes an impassioned speech to them. Um. You know, I really wanted to do this for the right reasons. Now, they help her win, but for the wrong reason. Sure. They realized that during spring break, they would have to go to Washington, D.C. as part of being the student council president, which is worse than getting a parking space that they want. So they go on the air and they claim to be Daisy and basically throw the election in her favor. She wins. Um, so should they do the right thing for the wrong reasons and then they say the only thing we want is the parking space. And she says, no, that's where I'm going to be moving the bus stop so that the poor kids don't have to walk so far. Um, and so she does the right things. It's kind of a dick about it. Do you remember what they said that she would give the people uh, if she won uh, for her class president? No, it was something like, I remember Zach said he would guarantee that all the teachers gave random Fs. That okay. was the thing. To that was for him. His yeah. nomination. I believe they yeah, said they'd I have Lizzo. I think Lizzo's going to work, uh, do the homecoming dance, something to that effect, maybe the prom. And everybody's going to get 50 bucks upon graduation or $500 or something like that. And a micro pig. There you go. And everybody was going to get a micro pig. And that's what sold the school over. I do like that one of the things that um, Save the Bell was famous for after the first year, and I guess you would say that Save the Bell originally started as a show called... um, Oh, what was it? S- something like, hello, Miss Daisy. Good morning, Miss Bliss. Good morning, Miss Bliss. And it was yep. focused on the teacher. And if you watch it on Peacock now, they've retroactively made that the first season. And it's at Jefferson High School. It doesn't take place in California. The real season and where it got Carl Carl saved by the bell is uh, 1989 in uh, what is what they call season two on Peacock. But it starts with um, Dancing at the Max which we'll talk a little bit about and compare it to in a second. But um, even from that first episode, Zach would look directly at the camera and talk or pause time. Mm -hmm. And it was shown that Zach could break the fourth wall and was aware he's in a show. And I assumed they would give that to Zach's son. And Mm -hmm. they don't, they give it to Daisy, clearly marking her as the, the new, um, I was going to say Protestant, uh, but I'm not, it's protagonist. protagonist. (laughs) (laughs) There we go. Um, So I I like that, that that trait carried over, that she's aware she's in a show and is telling you this story about how it's happening to her. So um, that that was a nice little carryover as well. I loved her first time that she does it. She turns to the camera and goes, did this white boy just say that to me? Yeah. And I was surprised because I was like, oh, they're going to do this. Okay. Because that that was always kind of cheesy. And I thought they were going to cut that. I thought they were going to be like, no, that's, Breaking the fourth wall, that's done. Nope, they kept that in there, and I'm glad they did. Yeah, for sure. Because you see something like the first episode, the dancing at the max, and how even in that beginning, there was something to that. There was a uniqueness to that that uh, obviously a lot of shows stole after that. I, I don't know if I'd say a lot of shows, but your favorite show, what's the um, 
uh, the takeoff. Uh, I'll, I'll think of it in a minute. But anyways, there was the office. No, so they're no, always no. looking at the camera. Oh, darn it. That show about Cameron that was a movie and then he crashed his dad's car and then they made the show that was not the show like that. Do you know what I'm talking about? I cannot remember what you're talking about. And I want to call it Fast Times at Ridgemont High, but that's not it. And it's it's the one with Matthew Broderick. Oh, uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. What was the TV show they made? Oh, the ripoff was Parker Lewis Can't Lose. There you go. Hey, we got there. definitely do on the show. We we got there. We got there, Matt. He broke the fourth wall a lot too. And that was, I think that was at least a little bit stolen from, from both of those two things. So yes, long circle to get Um, there for no apparent reason. And so I guess we should say one of the, let's compare the, a little bit of the new show now that you know the plot and and kind of the type of humor to the original show, which I would say, I will say this, this one's uh, episode, the first episode was called very cleverly pilot, which I'm never a fan of. No, the, for the new one, it was called Pilot. Oh, I got you. For the new one, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah. Now, for the old one, it was Dancing at the Max, and there is basically a dance competition, which the Max is brought back in the new show with the same guy. So Max is still running this diner 30 still years later. On kids. And that's right. Still, still creepily perfect on kids. <laughs> um, so the original one, there's a dance competition with Casey Kasem, mm-hmm. and everybody pairs off. Uh Let's see. It was like Screech and Lisa. Zach decides to go with Jesse because Jesse's teaching him so he can ask out Kelly. But Kelly ends up going with Slater. And at the end, I believe Screech and Lisa win. So uh, plenty of problems with, you know, everybody should have known. None of that should have been a surprise because, again, they show it for the second sure. time at the very mm-hmm. end. But um, do the kids know who Casey Kasem is? Do you think? Only is the voice of. Uh, Shaggy. I think that would be the only way people would know him now. Yes. Um, I don't think most people younger than us would have any idea who he is, but he, he is the voice of Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, the original voice. So I'm going to try to see Lillard doing that voice. He's doing Casey Kasem's actual voice. We're going a little bit behind the scenes now. I'm going to try this again because I asked you the question the last time we tried to record this, that I broke the machine. But my question is who might be the Casey Kasem of 2020? Would it be Mario Lopez? That would not be accurate. I'm gonna say <laughs> I'm gonna say Charlemagne the God, and then you're gonna say who again? I'm gonna say who because I still don't know. <laughs> Since you told me that last episode two weeks ago, I still have no idea who that is. I would be interested you know to kind of see who it would be. I mean, you could go Carson Daly, maybe. Maybe Carson Daly. I can see that Ryan Seacrest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would be interested to to see how they do it. Now, also, do kids have dance competitions at the random cafe around the corner from uh, school? Yeah, that was something that in eighties and nineties movies had a lot, where you could just run into a gang and <laughs> and right. you just dance it out, dance out your problems. Um, and I think they have one night to prepare, or at least that's the way they. Well, they make it look like they have a couple of days, but Lisa and, and Screech do it over one night. Um, they're just that talented. And the first one did have some zaniness to it as well that we should talk about our probably my favorite scene, and I think yours too in the pilot of the original, was where they're all in band together. It's the only class that all the major characters share. Mm-hmm. And they're playing a, a classic tune terribly until the teacher leaves the room to like take a call or something. And then they rip into this like jazzed up, funky version. They're all really good. Uh, Zach's playing trombone and he's chewing gum and so right. a bubble comes out the end of his trombone and pops uh, everybody's just rock and roll until the teacher comes back in and then they go back to pouring poorly which i don't get the joke other than let's just waste everyone else's time and not get practice in i, I don't understand um but for whatever reason that was a really funny bit it didn't fit anywhere else with the rest of the show at all um it was like somebody wrote that scene some like in college and was like, I've been waiting for a show to put this in and jammed it in there. Um, but I do remember that this show had no weird little scene. This was much better crafted. It was mm-hmm. cohesive. The characters were much better structured. And we did say in the original that one of the nice things about the pilot is all the dynamics between the character are established. Yep. Screech is a sick of it to Zach. Zach and AC are rivals. They both like Kelly Kapowski. Jesse's concerned about the environment, but will always be a good friend. 
uh, Screech has a thing for Lisa. Lisa will never care about uh, Screech. And she's also very fashion conscious. And of course, Mr. Belding gets no respect. And to get all those dynamics in the in Dancing to the Max, they did a great job. Yep. I think same thing here. Um, they really understood, and Tracy did a really good job of of nailing who all these old characters are, their kids, and their doppelgangers from the inner city, um, and how they're all going to relate to each other. Because I guess you should say that the large black kid that they're trying to get into the football team mm -hmm. decides he is going to try out for the musicals and yep. he has an amazing voice and the larger black girl who is the best friends of daisy um is trying to make a new you know name for herself at this new school so she tries out for the football team and she crushes it mm -hmm. and so mario lopez uh or ac slater learns that you know, you can't just go after the people that look the part. You know, he was going after this larger black guy because he just assumed he would want to be the football player when it was this black girl who had a real interest in playing football and was just crushing it. And the large black kid wanted to sing, you know, and I, I think that also shows that nowadays the stereotypes would have been played up so hard in the original. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were a nerd, you were a nerd. If you were a jock, you were a jock. And in this one, they really do flip it and make them real characters that care about their own passions you know and, I, and, and I, they I, acknowledge I things uh, one of the things that i really liked um was when they go to the max and they're going to eat and one of the characters that may have been daisy said isn't it expensive to come here every day and they're like yeah but it's like an acknowledgement that these are people from two different worlds and it's like yeah you have to pay for your food every day and that's really expensive yeah and i, I it's weird that they don't like zag never feels bad about it they it's it's even like uh um michael higgy says uh john michael higgins says that you know they're gonna take their place they 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 were yeah. born there they're gonna take their place at the table you have to learn to take your place too um mac morris is not a bad kid you know he, he's a little bit sleazy he's a little bit scummy but he's definitely less scummy than zach was yeah you know he seems to be a much better person than his father was um, everybody seems to be a little more aware, a little more self-conscious, a little more aware of the world around them. Um, but they also don't shy away from the fact that like, yeah, I have an iPad and I have all the books yeah. that on my iPad and you don't. That's weird to me. So you're going to have to go buy all these giant textbooks and lug them around. And I don't I kind of feel bad for you. You know, I have a poster but guy. I'm not just going to go buy you a phone. New segment alert. New segment alert. Dell has no wee idea what's wee about wee to happen. Wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. Can you do that? Uh, pa pow, whatever the. I, uh, we'll do it later. Anyways, new segment. Just insert it. Matt runs this conversation off the rails. Are you ready? Yes. Here you go. Have you ever seen the web show called 28 Days Slater? No, I have not. Okay. <laughs> Take oh this. my goodness. I will give this to you. It came out way long time ago. And okay. for 28 days, I guess in February, this guy turns from Mario Lopez to AC Slater. Obviously, it's not the real Mario Lopez to somebody playing it, right? So every 28 days, like he's hip and he's cool and he wears the jacket and he turns his uh, chair around. And it's just like these five minute interludes of him being Slater for 28 days. The funniest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Okay, I definitely is that YouTube or something? YouTube. I'm gonna have to... Yeah, no, it should be okay. YouTube. All right. We'll try to find that and put that in a playlist for you people. So check out our YouTube channel, Pilot Pass, Pulling a Pizana. You're going to have to search for it. Now we're back on track. Back to Say by the Bell. Yeah. Both the new one and the Pick old up that one. Train, put it back. I don't think that I got to say enough about Zach Morris's press conferences. That for me was the <laughs> highlight of these episodes because he still has it. He still, he still has, has the it. charisma. Yep. Still fun to watch. He's been our hero forever. Dropped a uh, dead man on campus. Uh, Franklin and Bash. The, all these Fingers things are wonderful. Ash. By the way, did you see the clip of Franklin and Bash in the episode? Oh my goodness, it was so awesome. No, I didn't. No, yeah, I missed that. He's talking about, I've done all these things. I used to be this. I used to be that. I was a lawyer. Oh, he, one that's time. right. He says he was a court litigator. Yes, yes that's right. <laughs> I was so happy. No, to I, see missed, that. I missed the video clip. <laughs> uh, so I did good. put that he's a he's now the governor after being a trial lawyer. 
he uh, according to the reason he, the, all these schools get cut is apparently he has to cut ten billion dollar in funding. And the way he straight up says it is uh, Kelly Kapowski, his wife, says he did it by cutting all the funding to public schools, poor public schools, and giving it to the fracking and fuel industry. And then she paused and she's like, Zach, I can't get behind this. And then they cut the commercial. <laughs> oh, I love a good political ad. So good. Yeah. But setting was- it up, I thought he was going to be the star. And I love that, that they set it up with him. And then he's talking about, because it starts with him doing the, the voiceover. Mm. So you're like, oh, we, the, we're going to do the obvious thing of Zach Morris is the main character. And we're going to stick with him and see his new life as an adult. Right. And then he says, and my kid. And then you're like, oh, okay, his kid's going to be. And then it isn't for a couple of minutes until they jump to Daisy and the poor kids from the inner city schools. And you, yeah. it's not until she turns to the camera and you go, oh, she's the star. She's the lead. I love that I was misled through yeah. all of that. For sure. And I think that they have found a good balance. I've only seen the pilot episode, but I would say there that they gave me enough of the adults, but they also gave me enough of the kids too. Like that wasn't yes. too heavy handed one way or the other. Whereas again, I say something like 90210 was all adults. They had a kid basically in the show, but she really didn't have any kind of part, take part into the actual story itself. Well, like remember when Scrubs tried to do that handoff to a completely separate cast, yep. but they had JD mm-hmm. stay and it felt like they this didn't feel like that at all. This felt like, oh no, the world's getting bigger and moving on. Zach is still involved in the show, but only not in cameo form, but as a larger than life character that affects all these other people. Mm-hmm. His kids are there, and you get to see it from a completely different angle, you know, completely different socioeconomic status. And it didn't feel like they were trying to hand it off like they did with say by the bell, the new class. Right. You know, it really did feel like the universe got the, the world of saved by the bell got bigger and more and, and more in depth and that's hard to do but i mean like i said tracy wickfield has worked with some of the best you know robert carlisle and uh tina fey and for some of the best shows on television so there's not many people that could have done it and i i, I gotta hand it to her i think she did an amazing job with this and saying all that I want to say something that's going to get us protested and maybe banned from the internet right now because I'm going to say all those things that you just said relate Saved by the Bell to The Wire because The Wire did that. They would give you a big character, and they'd spend a whole entire season with them, and then the next season, they'd just be an ancillary character. They're just in the back. They're barely there. Yeah, like McNulty was through in all five seasons, but he went from being the protagonist to being a a cop to being a cop even further in the background mm-hmm. and as, as you're right and as they would introduce new characters you know when barksdale would go down or uh idris elba would would be replaced the people that stayed on took smaller roles but the roles were just as important you know and i, I yep. gotta tell you that's actually a great analogy i really like that shut it down the party so by the bell the wire of after school <laughs> television i love it that is awesome <laughs> Let's do that from now on. Let's make a poster of that. So, Dell, we've talked about the new one. We've talked about the old one. We've enjoyed them both, I think. So let me ask you, the co-host of this podcast that we are doing right now, would you recommend Saved by the Bell, the pilot episode, to the people? I'll, I'll give it for both. I would give an – it depends on what age. As a, as a teenager, I would recommend – the original stay by the bell eight out of ten i would give the new one an eight out of ten as an adult Mm -hmm. i would give the original a seven or eight out of ten and the new one honestly a ten out of ten i i really five minutes in i was like i can't wait to see where this goes i got re-excited about characters i thought i wasn't going to care about Mm -hmm. and when we went back and watched the dancing to the max i went oh I forgot how enjoyable the show was. I, I I liked it again. It was like when we watched Miami Vice. I went, oh, right. This was still good. Whereas we watched Knight Rider, and I was like, oh, this doesn't hold up. Saved by the Bell was still fun to watch again, the original. But this new one just I, – I, I'm actually excited to, to watch the rest of the season. Like I'll yeah. probably pay the $5 a month just to watch the rest of this show. I so I'll take so- 10 out of 10 on, on the new one. 
I was so pleasantly surprised. Um, as you said, I was kind of shocked that they figured out how to do this so fast. It really worked with these characters. All the young people that they have, I think, are really good actors. And I think they're really going to work with these characters. Uh, the girl that plays Daisy is fantastic. Like, I think that she is just blows me away sometimes as how oh, good she she'll, is. She'll be in a movie in the next three years. I must guarantee it. I mean, she, the nuance with which she played when she was upset, when she was happy, angry. I mean, I would not be surprised if we don't see her in something in a, in a big film in the next three to five years, honestly. Uh, you would got to think what, so. The kid that played Mac Morris, Zach Morris's kid, I had to mm-hmm. look that up because I'm like, that has to be his kid. He is playing that just like um in Bill and Ted's Daughters. You know, the yep. kid that plays Ted's daughter, I was like, that is exactly the character of Ted as a little female. I thought for sure that was his, it was Mark, John Paul's, um, or Mark Paul's real daughter. And I uh, real, sorry, real son. <laughs> and it isn't, it's some nobody who, you know, is starring in a very big show on NBC. So doing yep. better than me. Um, what is his name? Oh, Mitchell Hoog, or possibly it's Hog, depending on how uh, you pronounce it, whether that's, whether you choose to pronounce it correctly or incorrectly. Um, but I, I, I could have sworn that was his kid. If you told me it was, I wouldn't have doubted that for a second because he knows a ton of the idiosyncrasies. So you could tell he went back and watched a lot of the old show to just because there were certain hand movements or gestures um, that he made that was the same way Mark Paul would do it when he was a kid, that he would kind of flourish around his hands and the way he would start and stop his sentences. So uh, hats off to him too. I was really impressed. Since you butchered a name, will you also butcher the the girl that plays Daisy? Her name. Uh, okay, let me find that one real fast. That is ha- oh Haskiri gosh. Velasquez. Ha- Haskiri Velasquez. Yes, that's, I mean, that's not bad at all. I think you nailed. She it. deserves us to say it correctly because she did a great job. So that's yeah. I hope, but I hope I got it all right. Oh, can we also just throw in that for no reason? And I love this. There's a character, Josie Tota. Uh, that's the actress. She plays Lexi Haddad de Fabrizio. And when they're all at the max together, she's like, hi, I'm Lexi Haddad de Fabrizio. I have my own uh, reality show. I'm a transgender cheerleader. Uh, if you could tune in and watch, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> it's not the, there's no, I mean, I'm sure like in later episodes that'll come up, but they're like, no, we're putting a transgendered female with her own reality show in the pilot as a character. Mm -hmm. And then we're never going to address it again for the rest of the episode. I love that. Yeah, it should be that way. I mean, it's just another thing. I mean, it's just like a normal normal thing. It's just the show updated all the things it should have updated and kept all the things that worked and carried over into adulthood from the original. And, of course, they got John Michael Higgins, and I just – he's like Bill Hader to me. Everything he's in, he's great. I've never seen him do anything not – he carries the scene if he's in it, you know. Agreed. And I also recommend both the original pilot, the original, original pilot. I recommend all three of the Say by the Bell pilots for the people <laughs> because that's how I'm feeling today. I'm feeling generous. I'm feeling in a good mood. And they all entertain me. Like there wasn't anything that I was just like, oh, do we have to do this again? They were all great. I enjoyed them. They were funny. They are wholesome. I think that's a word yeah. that is not used in TV much anymore, but I think there's a wholesomeness to that that I really appreciate. Yeah, you know what? This was this was I, I gotta admit, like you said earlier, not everybody does everything for the right reasons in this, and it's not so goody two shoes. Everybody learns an after school lesson, mm-hmm. but this did feel like a wholesome show. Like I would love to let my daughter watch this, um, I, whether she thinks it's funny or not. I I I would love for her to watch this. Dale, let me ask you a question while we've got you here. Can you tell the people where they can find us on the World Wide Webbies? Yes. The most important, of course, is our Patreon page, where if you like us, you could please, please, please donate uh, some money. We're using it to put some merch together, including T-shirts, stickers. Uh, for that, you can get some unedited episodes. You get the um, – we record these on Zoom, so you can actually see Matt and I recording these uh you can see what we are and are not wearing you can see how messy each of our backgrounds um uh, no, are, right. are our bedrooms um maybe we should have a vote on who has the worst uh office right now hey uh hey, let's see I besides got pictures Patreon, on the wall at least I yeah i gotta start getting some more you. my artwork up the um 
I got my DuckTales collection that I'm just waiting to move into the new studio because it's just going to be all nice. DuckTales behind me. Excellent. But um, so besides Patreon, which is our, a big one for us, right now we're also trying to push the YouTube channel. It's just a static image, but you can listen to all the audio because we're trying to hit 100 subscribers so that we can get our own personalized URL. So that'd be youtube.com slash, you know, pilot pass. So we're trying to hit 100 there. That'd be a big help. Even if you listen on a different podcast app, at least jump over to YouTube, Pilot Pass, pull in a Pizana, and just subscribe to that. Hit the notification bell. But you, we can listen on any podcasting app, Player FM, iTunes, Stitcher. Uh, I think we're on Google now. We're attempting to get on Audible, the podcast section on Audible. So just search Pilot Pass, pull in a Pizana. You'll find us no problem. Subscribe there. On uh, Instagram, we are Pilot Pass on Facebook, we are slash Pilot Pass. And on the Twitters, we are slash Pilot Pass Pod. Because it's a weird one out, and what are you going to do about it? Nothing, punks. Nothing. They know how we roll. Dell, those are great information. I do not have anything to add to that, so let me ask you. Do you want to leave the people with anything before we go? I just come on about the time. It's all right, because I'm safe about the bell. And then there went $5,000. <laughs>